In this problem we've got three factories producing three different products, M, N and P, and we want to establish which is the best way to minimise our costs. So we want to allocate each factory to producing each particular product so as to reduce our overall costs for the whole organisation. So in this case, as before in the previous Hungarian algorithms, what we do is we look at each row and we select the smallest entry in each row. And when we've done that, we subtract it from all the entries in that row. So we're subtracting 55 from each entry in the first row. In the second row, we'll subtract 85 from each entry. And in the third row, we'll subtract 70 from each entry. Once that step's done, we then look at each column. So we're going to subtract the smallest entry from column 1, which is 25, and we do that for each entry in that column. And column 2 and 3 are a lot easier, because 0 is the smallest entry, so all the entries in column 2 will remain the same, and likewise for column 3. Now what we do is we look to cross out, using horizontal and vertical lines, the 0, but we want to minimise the number of lines that we use. So we've crossed out all the zeros using only two lines. Now it is a 3x3 three three matrix. Now that means that we've got more work to do. We actually want to get three lines at this point. So what we need to do is look at the numbers that are not crossed out. The smallest of those is 15. We're going to subtract 15 from each of those entries. But what we're also going to do is add 15 to the zero that's at the intersection of the two lines that have been used. And that applies for any zero that's at an intersection of the cross lines. Once we've done that, we repeat the process as before and look to cross out the zeros using a minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines. This time we've achieved it with three lines and because it's a three by three matrix, we can actually stop at this point as far as that process is concerned. We're now ready to actually determine the minimum cost. Now if we look carefully at this matrix, there are zeros in row 1 and row 2 in column 1 and column 3. We have no choice but to use the middle zero of the last row. So if we're allocating a zero to each row and column, we have no choice but to use that one. But for row 2, we could go with the first zero and the last zero in row 1 as one possible solution. Or we could actually do a switch because you'll notice that the zeros in row 1 and row 2 could be alternated and still achieve a zero in each row and in each column. We'll have a look at it in this picture here. So we could do it this way. But again, row 3, we have to use a zero in the middle. So we have two possible solutions. Let's have a look and see what happens as far as minimum cost is concerned. In the first matrix, the zero at the left of row 2 matches 125. 0 in the middle of the last row matches 70, and the 0 in the top right hand corner matches 55. That all together comes to a total of $250. Now let's check for our second matrix. We've got a 0 in the top left hand corner, and that matches 95. We've got a 0 in the last entry of the second row, and that matches 85, and we've got a 0 in the middle of the last row which matches 70. So when we add those amounts together, we get $250. Now that's the same as the first amount we got. So there are two options here as far as minimum cost goes. One option is to allocate product P to factory A, product M to factory B, and product N to factory C. That's based on the matrix on the left hand side at the bottom of the screen. Or what we could also do is allocate product M to factory A, product P to factory B and product N to factory C. Either way, both of these methods arrive at a minimum cost of $250.